I have, yeah, I've, I've read a number of books. Um, the one that I'm reading, I think, because book talk. Yeah, because book talk. Yeah, it's the 11th book in the series. Mm. It's the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. 11 books deep. It's not the only thing deep in this podcast. This is called An Assassin on the Agenda by T.E. Kinsey. Right? So, that Kinsey? the, The Lady Hardcastle mysteries follows Lady Hardcastle. Mm, surprising. And her maid slash best friend. Okay. Um Lady in waiting? No. No. Like like lady's maid. Okay. Like attendant, what you know. Yeah. Well no, I was just curious because I know sometimes they mix them up, that's yeah. what I was asking. Um slash best friend, right? Um and Arm Miss Armstrong is her name. Who has a strong arm? <laughs> this is my strong hand. It's funny that you say that because Lady Hardcastle's brother Calls Armstrong strong arm. That's his nickname for. This is my strong hand. But they're they're fascinating individuals. So when we come across them in the first book, they are getting a they've Lady Hardcastle's per, or rented a country house out in the British countryside, and they're kind of going into retirement. And it is implied that they were up to some shit for the government before. They went into retirement. I mean, we know we hear about moons out, goons out, but this sounds like countryside government shenanigans. <laughs> but <laughs> this is based pre World War One. Okay. So I want to. I can't pin it down. I think it was like. I think it starts like five or six years before World War One. The pre Spanish flu. Um, and. You know, again, they're they're in Britain. You know, Ooh. she is a widow from. She's a lady because she's a widow. Her husband, I think, was knighted, and that's how she got titled. Yep, because the title carries to the wife. Yeah, the spouse. Um, and you know, I'm not going to talk about like Guinness everything that happens like beforehand because the slow release of like their life before they were their retirement um is very fascinating throughout the series as they slowly release more information but they retired to the countryside and then you know they they go to a friend's house they they have the manor up on the hill and they go up to their place and you know they're they're country gentry but you know they don't have a lot of money because we're getting into the times where a lot of the nobility was broke. Was broke. Um, but they still had nobility. I have a title. But yeah, broke. And shit. they still had, you know, land and assets, but they had a lot of debt and yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, and they had a a a piece that they were going to sell, and it gets stolen. And so they say, "Hey, we need to keep this under the table so the insurance company doesn't stop covering us." So can you do the investigation kind of under the table? We know you did some shady shit <laughs> for the government. So the you... good old boy system. And so this is the first mystery that they take part in. Ooh. Sounds pretty interesting. But they it, touch on multiple mysteries. And they t- they touch on most, you know, there's it's because it's classic mystery novel, right? Um but it's written by a modern author. Um, it's based in the times, but with an older feel. With an older feel, right? Um, so your key tones are there. And the anyone, older mystery. anyone who who likes to touch on, you know, the um, because they do touch on the what's it called? Um, you want me to hold your hand? The the, the, the woman voting, uh, women's suffrage. Movement. Yeah, women's suffrage movement. They touch on the women's suffrage movement. Okay. Uh. Because I mean, your your main characters are women, right? So you're going to touch on a lot of this, as well as you know different aspects of what they were dealing with back then, right? Yeah, I mean, um, it sounds like it's a timepiece while also being a mystery. Yeah, with yeah. a modern artist, but has key tones of the past. And I thought I think that the mysteries are well done. I love 
all the characters because the characters are very well done. So you're eleven bucks, eleven bucks in, right? Eleven bucks in. Yeah. So multiple mysteries throughout this these eleven books. Yep. At any point where you're like, oh, I saw this coming in the mysteries, or were they so off book that you were like, oh, I didn't see that coming. I think that there were a few times where I saw it coming. But more majority are like, there was context clues, but I missed it completely. Yeah, there there were times where I missed it, you know. Um, part of that, I think whenever, especially when I'm reading blinders, or whenever I'm reading mysteries, I try and keep my blinders on a little bit. You try not to meta it. Yes, because I don't want, to I like. the thrill. I like the reveal. Yeah. Right? So I try not to think i know some people get a lot of joy about trying to figure out the mystery i mean i try to figure it out and it ruins it for both books and shows just because i was like it's hard for me in a book or a show it's hard to turn it off it's like oh well, there was this this and it's like oh is this so i'll hold it to myself and then just be like you're thinking about something and i was like do you really want to know you want me to really ruin this episode for you and about i'd say about 80 percent of the time I end up ruining it just because it's so apparent. Yeah. Like, it's it's kind of hard not to do it in a show. But books, I find a little bit harder to ruin if you... I, I find it easier for me to put my blinders on for a book than it is for a show. I will ruin a show yep. or a movie. But for books, I find it a lot easier. I would agree on that. Most of the time, I won't ruin it for a book. Because I've even talked to you about some of superpowers being one of them. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. And every single one of them was wrong. And I loved it. I loved being wrong because then I could... You were right about one thing. But you were right, and then you second-guessed yourself. Because it was a superpowered dude falling in love with the one girl. Yeah. That's what it was. But no, I. it sounds like this would be a... Anyone who loves mystery would be a good book series to read. It's a good book. The books are not really long. I love it because, like, they take time out for them to have dinner, to have drinks, to relax. So they're showing the lifestyle to, of the time yes, period, too. Yes, like, you get a lot of the lifestyle. You get a lot of the feel. So they it's talk, really a time period. They talk for the period, mm-hmm. right? Like, the language is for the period. And the interactions between Lady Hardcastle and, and Armstrong, like, don't get me wrong, technically they come from very different realms. Yeah, Silver Spoon. But and... they've been through some shit together, and they are best friends. There is no doubt. And, like, there's an age gap there, too. Like, Armstrong is much younger than Lady Hardcastle. Lady Hardcastle's in her 40s. I think Armstrong's in her 20s. Okay. But, Yeah. They, like, let's not make any pretense or mistakes here. They're best friends. Heck yeah. And and it's that relationship and everything. And it's not a, they're best friends, but they're gay, which you run into a lot of the time. A lot of the time. No, they're best friends. Yeah. Right? Like They're best friends, and it shows it throughout the mystery novel, it sounds like. Yeah. Very much. You're like. How many books in the series? 11. Oh, so you're on your last book for this series. Yeah. Or did you already finish it? Um, no, I'm on the last book. Uh, on a scale of one to five, where would it rate in your books? Oh, because I don't think we've started scaling. We, how enjoyable. we haven't. I so one I being am going to, I'm going to do a counter here and say I don't want to rate my book. Okay, then on because we know you're more sci fi. You're, I know we know you're more history oriented. Yeah, I, I do sci-fi and fantasy primarily, right? So not rating the book, not rating at all. Where would you place this out of all the books you've read? One closer to it's a recycle, and you'll read it again. Oh no, these are absolutely recycled yeah, books. Not like I said, not rating. It was like it's going to have to be a minute yeah. because it's so vivid, or this is going to live in my brain for a minute, or it's like. Uh, maybe in a couple months I can recycle I, I it. I could, and... I could, I could, I could rate this as a a recycle series. I could cycle back through this. Yeah, series. rating recycle, or it's going to be a couple years before it jumps into recycle. I could probably recycle this book series relatively every couple yeah. of years, right? 
Um, it's not like the Cradle series, which I've, I, it's like, you've binged it so much that I've, it just lives. It's like comfort food for yeah. me, right? It's like every Chicken time I'm waffles. like, I run out of stuff that I was like, I need something to feel good about myself. I was like, I cycle back through the Cradle series, right? Just one of those things. 